One item on the uh, on, on the agenda for a public hearing. And seeing as how it's that time, I think I'll go right into that. It's a request for determination of applicability to determine the replacement of an existing 32 by 48 carport in a um, subject to the Wetlands Protection Act or Northampton Wetlands Ordinance. Um, it's uh, for, I guess, Frank Associates, LLC, 50 Cook Avenue. And uh, if they're there, let's go. I'm here, Chris Frank. And uh, it's, it's regarding the repair, well, it started out to be the repair uh, of an existing carport, but it's to the point where repairs are really not an option anymore, and we didn't want it to go through another winter. Um, so we're asking if we can just replace it with newer materials and new construction. Okay, did, has everyone um, looked over the, uh, the application? Yeah. Yes. It seemed pretty straightforward to, uh, to me. It's, uh, um, I don't think it's, it, it's, it's in a, a, a paved and gravel situation, I believe. So it's, uh, it's, it's not going to get gravel. any better. Um, and, uh, Hi everyone. Hey, Hi, this is Elizabeth. Can you guys see me? Can't see. You. I got a uh, yeah. start video. Uh, I did. But um, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> okay. I'll turn the chairmanship over to Kevin now that he's here. Well, thanks, uh, Mason. My computer froze up and it took me a while to get it to switch. We had joined, uh, Randy and I had joined the uh, Google Meet link instead of the Zoom link. Um, so uh, any questions or comments from commissioners uh, um, about this uh, Cook Avenue case? I, I wonder if uh, Chris could uh, explain the construction process that he's planning to do on the, the new build. I can um, uh, I can answer uh, that. You like. I'm, I'm JD Ross. JD. Builder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm the builder, so the structure is over 50 years old, and it was um, old posts just sunk in the ground, and they've all rotted out, and the roof is falling down. And what we propose to do is to put some precast truss posts in the ground, which involves we'll pull the old posts out. We're going to dig a two by two hole, four feet deep put a precast frost post in the ground and bury it right away. There's no, there's no extra material coming in or out. And then we put some six by six posts up to support a girder and a trust roof to match the, the same style of what they have right now, but to meet the modern building codes. We need, we need to use trusses, not inadequate rafters. Um, there's really no impact to the wetland in, in my opinion, because there's no, we're, we're the hole's going to be open for all of, 30 minutes to put a pier in and back filled immediately. There's no extra material coming in or out. Um, I'll be glad they put up some silt fence for you folks if you like. He has some underground utilities that already come to the structure that we're just gonna sever to do it and then reconnect. Um, so there's no trenching or excavation other than just putting in little piers. And honestly, sometimes we just use a big post hole digger to drill the holes out. Um, and that's about it, I guess. So have you determined how many posts are going to be used? I've, I started this project with Louis Hasbrook, who's since retired, and it's my intention to is use as few as possible. We're going to have less than there is right now. Right now, there's posts in the front, the middle, and the back. We're only going to have posts in the front and the back. And I think there's probably going to be 10 posts, but there could be 12 posts. Um, I got to see how the engineering works out once we get to that point. Louis told me to start the progress process with you guys to see if you're permitted to do it. And then I'll get the engineering reports to find out what we need to make it happen in terms of the, the spans and the bearings. How many posts are currently there now? I don't have the picture in front of me, but I think there's probably 16 or more. 
Oh, because okay. there's right now there's a row down the middle to support it. There's ones in the front, the middle, and the back. When we're done, we'll just have a row in the front and a row in the back. We can use trusses to clear span the middle section of it. Is it still going to stay open? It's still going to stay open, just like yeah. it is right now. Yep. Um, it's going to have um, whatever we need for required wind shear and bracing and so forth. But I anticipate like probably four or five vertical six by six posts in the front and the back and then a beam across the top and the trusses will sit on that and whatever the building inspector engineer, engineers required for bracing is what we're going to do. But I'll have the same gist of what is, is there now. The ground's, <laughs> gonna, the ground's going to be the same. It looks pretty flat right there. Uh, it, is, it is pretty same. So we're not altering the grade in any way whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. Other questions or comments from commissioners? From the pictures, it looked pretty straightforward, like uh, with the limited excavation that you're going to be doing, there isn't a lot of risk of uh, uh, erosion down the hill behind. Yeah, there's not good, there shouldn't be any stormwater runoff or issues for this whatsoever. I'll be glad to erect some silt fence along the edge of the the site there on the top of the bank there to collect anything, some sawdust or anything that could possibly blow away. I have no problem doing that for you folks. Um, but we're gonna have all of them done in one day. So it's not in the past, you used to dig a hole and wait for it to get inspected and they bring a concrete yeah, truck and sure. you have a washout. Now they're all precast. It's very simple, very cut and dry. It's very easy and no mess. Any other questions? If not, uh... <laughs> Motion to close. So moved. And a second. Seconded. All in favor? Oh, Sarah, you have to uh, take uh, a vote. You don't need a vote for that. You, you can just close it. You can just close it? Okay. Yeah. All in favor, say aye. 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 Um, so it uh, seems, as Mason said, pretty straightforward. Uh, you can. Uh, Proposed work will not dredge, fill, or alter, so we can check box two. Uh, yes, it is a jurisdictional area, um, but uh, it, it uh, won't um, cause any uh, uh, damage to a jurisdictional area that we're responsible for. Sarah, you even commented that probably erosion control, control isn't necessary, at least from the photos, if I would agree. I don't think so. I mean, given the length of construction and the, the limited um, limited work that's actually going to be done, it would probably do more harm than good. Okay. So we want to make a motion to uh, uh, for a staff recommendation. So moved. And a second. Second. Any further discussion or special conditions? If not, now, sir, do you need a roll call? Yes. Uh, so Jason? Yes. Jack? Yes. Alec? Yes. Mason? Yep. Randy? Yes. Elizabeth? She was, you're, you're on mute, Elizabeth. You're mute. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, and, and Kevin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Good night now. Good night. Um, the uh, other item, uh, Sarah, is the uh, this new big chunk of land that looks like we're going to be able to pick up. Uh, yes, this we've had our eye on this one for a long time. If you've been on the commission long enough, Mason, you, you probably remember this being discussed in the past, um, but it didn't really go anywhere at that point. So new opportunity, and this will be our local acquisitions for natural diversity grant this year. Sarah, is this the parcel that's all posted with for sale signs? Uh, it very well may be. Yeah. And it's, it's been on the market on and off for a little while, but I, I think they finally decided this is a good option. Mm -hmm. I think they logged it a couple of years ago too, right? They did, yeah. Which is actually great for us, for uh, the commission, because it decreases the value slightly. So we'll end up paying less for it than we would have in its pre-logged condition. 
So, and uh, what's the, um, I don't have it on the screen now, what's the acreage involved? Yes. Uh, 53. Nice big piece. Good. Okay. Um, this is on Boggy Meadow Road. It is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No. Uh, looked like it just expands the uh, Fitzgerald, that, that part of Boggy Meadow that you used to have to walk by and realize that, yeah, it looks like it's all part of the same area, but it isn't really. Um, uh, now we really will yeah. be all part of this. Yeah, I think most people probably assume that this is protected already. Right. So uh, you need a, a, a motion to approve the acquisition and the application for a grant to fund it? Correct. Okay, who wants to make that motion? So moved. <laughs> and a second? Second. And now discussion. Elizabeth, something? Uh, you're muted again. No, you're muted. Okay, am I unmuted? No, yes. I can hear you. Yes, <laughs> okay, so um, two things. One, in that last roll call vote, I didn't know if you asked if you got Kevin's vote. I didn't hear that. Yeah. I did. did. Okay, yeah. okay. And then on this property, did you send us information on it? I didn't see an attachment. Uh, it, was just a, yeah. it was just a Google map, I believe. Yeah, just one picture. Yeah, so. Yeah, so that was the plan that accompanied the city council order. It's basically, it's an ortho photo basically showing where it is. So I got a staff report yesterday. Uh, yeah, maybe it was Monday. Concom agenda minutes. Yeah. I got the Cook Ave and then there's a the plan. I get you. It's funny because I saw Cook Ave and I thought that that's what the area was about. So what's the property? What's the name of the property we're about to vote on? It's the um, Wilbur. The city Greenway expansion. Yeah, I see. Uh, it, okay. and it's owned by the Wilbur family currently. So the, the Wilbur family is donating this to the city and fee or selling? They are selling. Um, so all of our council approvals come with them a, um, a borrowing authority that will never ever be executed no matter what. Um, so we're anticipating 150,000 at this point that Proper, that price may go down depending on um, Lathrop community's involvement in the project. What, what, explain the Lathrop involvement. Uh, so Lathrop may be interested in the donation, but we don't know at this point. Interested in purchasing it themselves? No, no. So the city, the, the deal wouldn't change for the city except our, our cost would go down. I see. I'm, I'm still not understanding. Uh, so we're, we're waiting to hear back from Lathrop communities about a possible donation. Uh, about so they would donate funds to go towards the purchase. So that's how the price for the city would go down. It would, yeah. So we're, we'll be applying for a local acquisitions for natural diversity grant and that has required match. We'll go to CPA this uh -huh. fall for that. So, so if Lathrop donate some money, what kind of rights would they have with the property long-term then, or if any? Uh, that, that wouldn't change, it would still be city owned. I see. They'd just be doing this out of the, being a good corporate citizen or community citizen? Uh -huh. I, I believe so, yeah. I, I don't have a lot of details at this point. Uh -huh. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Would there be an extension of their trail system into this property? And we, when we do trails, we do rely on volunteer groups. Um, Broadwood Coalition, I'm sure, would be interested in developing a trail network on the portions that are, are appropriate for trails that is pretty wet. Um, mm -hmm. Lathrop Communities does have some, some active trail users as well that could partner. Okay. Um, so someone want to make a motion to approve the acquisition and the application for grants to uh, fund the acquisition. Uh, so I had a motion and second, and that was discussion. Oh, that was discussion, right. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Roll Aye. call. Uh, Jason? Yes. 
Jack? Yes. Alec? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous. Mm -hmm. And um, the only other item I have, I don't know, Sarah, if you have, uh, you said Mill River Greenway acquisition update. Um, yeah, so I wanted to update the commission about an item that came up sort of in a timely way last time. Um, so when Village Hill first started to be developed, there was an agreement right. between the city and Mass Development that the, the fringe properties and the open space would come to the city in care and custody of the Conservation Commission. But I think that was 12 years ago at this point. So Mason will remember that, but, but the rest of you won't. I, I didn't remember that. Mm -hmm. um, so we should be closing on those fairly soon within the next few weeks. And those are portions along the Mill River? They, uh, it is. So basically the, the entirety of Village Hill around the development. So that includes a lot of Mill River frontage as well. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't want anybody to be surprised if that's in the paper. Yeah, okay. th those were the portions that were, that were sort of excluded from the invasive species control that we talked about last time. Right. right. It was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't extend into the portions that are past Village Hill uh, going west on the river that are now part of the state land leased to Smithville. It does not, no. Okay. So this is only part of the, the Village Hill property that Mass okay. Development has been in control of for years. And is that okay. now a, a, a sure thing? What What's the... Yes, I, so this was intended to be conveyed when development was complete. Right. It, it is getting there finally. Uh -huh, so the, okay. the acquisition can finally close. And do we have to accept it again, or have we already accepted it longer? No, ago? that was just an FYI. That was just an FYI. Okay. The other item I'm uh, I, I'm uh, interested in is to hear from Jack. Elizabeth has volunteered, Jack, when you rotate off uh, community preservation um, to take great. your place. Um, and I was interested in if you could talk a little bit. And Elizabeth, you may already have a pretty good handle on. Uh, the, the work and the learning curve involved in um, being a, a contributing member to the uh, Community Preservation Committee. But I'd be interested to hear sort of what kind of matters uh, come before you, what kinds of decisions do you make and uh, how long it takes after you are named before you feel like you actually uh, have a good handle on what's going on. Well, it took me a while to get the hang of it because um, the issues it, it's really a great committee because the issues are addressed by people from the planning department. There's a representative on the committee from the planning department, the rec department. Uh, there's uh, different views about the preservation mandate of the committee. And um, so you're dealing with a lot of different subjects from a lot of different points of view, which makes it a pretty dynamic and it's always great to give money away. Uh, you know, it's a great feeling to accomplish something at the end of a meeting and award some money for a worthwhile project. Occasionally there are controversies about how it should be spent and a lot of debate and negotiation uh, on how the money gets allocated from the different projects. But I think that's pretty lively and robust and uh, not too cantankerous, but uh, it's, it's really a great committee. I, I've had uh, and developed some good friendships on that committee and, and uh, learned a lot about other aspects of community preservation. So um, it's good to, to be an advocate for the Conservation Commission and um, kind of push the agenda forward that, from our point of view, but it's generally well received. And there is a good bit of community involvement because there are frequently uh, large groups of community represent, you know, that show up at these meetings mm -hmm. to uh, comment on different proposals. So it's, um, I can't say enough about it. It's really a, a great group and Elizabeth, if you, join you'll in, I, I know you'll enjoy it too right so for example when um, Sarah or Wayne is before the committee for a match 
on an acquisition, do you recuse yourself from that vote or how does that work? No, uh, I'm, you're still voting, but uh, you bring our the discussion from the Conservation Commission to that meeting and our point of view about it. So it's you don't have to recuse, re recuse yourself uh, from a, a vote on conservation uh, purchases. So you make it sound very attractive, actually. Um, I just I think it's great. I think it's really really great. <laughs> you know, you my my thought was to make it a two year um, rotation, so other commission like I could maybe do it the first two years and then after two years are up I, I'll just offer if anyone else is interested if not maybe I'll stay on or if someone else wants so we could kind of rotate it around if that made sense that's a great idea I, I was kind of jealously guarding it for myself I guess <laughs> I was selfish in that way but um, I think other members could uh, benefit from from being in the in the discussions it's great there used to be, um, uh, and I, maybe this was before the revisions to the city charter, um, there were several of us on the commission that were part of other committees. There were Comscom represent, I was on the economic development committee, and, uh, which no longer exists uh, because uh, post-charter revision, they uh, have a different structure. But um, uh, I, I wonder if there are other uh, city commissions or committees that um, with which there's a, a, a an overlap of interests that we should consider um, either having some kind of regular communication with or uh, having a representative on. Um, I'm not sure how those decisions were made in the past, but when I first joined, there was two or three of us that were on other committees yeah there are there are slots uh, on the committee that are that come from the planning department and the rec department and help me Sarah if, if uh, his, historic commission historic housing commission. authority yeah and the planning board so you do get that representation from mm -hmm. other groups uh, and there's also two elected and I believe three appointees. So uh, at this point, the CPC is the only body for which the Conservation Commission is required to have a representative. And that's actually mm -hmm. required not only by city ordinance, but also by the state law that sets it up. So it's sort of intentionally bringing in all of these representatives. Right. From Don't we have a rep on the Ag <laughs> Committee too? We used to, long not ago. It. Oh, okay. The, uh, the, um, committee that Jack is on is is really worthwhile I'm having served on it and also being part of actually developing the committee when it uh, when it first began going through uh, all the planning sessions and stuff uh, it's it's very worthwhile and uh, it's it's exciting it's a good committee to be on uh, one question I've had, Jack. Initially, it seemed like there was larger sums. There were larger sums of money available. Um, has that tapered off now? And what's the formula by which that? Well, it does gets determined. The pot of money does change every year based on um, the funding from the state, and also because we have borrowed money. So some of our money get, has to do with debt repayment. So some bond issues, uh, can, that can greatly affect how much money is available then to dole out. And we've had a lot of uh, requests for funding so that uh, there's always a stiff competition. And we, since they're, most of them are so worthwhile, it's really difficult yeah. and not try to to uh, spend all your money in the false fall session and and uh, very little for the spring grant cycle but um it, so many communities in the state of massachusetts now are part of the community preservation act that the pot has to be split up in so many different ways that has affected it 
but there's always a, an effort to try to get the state to uh, put more money into, into the fund to uh, keep it meaningful and viable. Are there any hints yet about the impact of uh, the pandemic on since state funds are diminishing? Um, is it likely to impact uh, CPC money? So a, a, a bill had just passed recently. It would, this fiscal year or this coming fiscal year will be the first time it, it's being um, implemented for the full year. Um, previously, in, before a lot of communities had signed on, every community got a 100% match from the state. So whatever you collected locally in taxes, that would be matched at a full 100%. As more and more communities signed on, then there was a lot less money to go around. Um, there was some uh, state budget surplus money that was available a few years. Clearly, that's not going to be the case this year. There's not going to be a budget surplus. Um, but there, a bill did just pass to raise the registry of deeds fees permanently to provide an additional source of revenue. Um, I don't think anybody has a sense yet what those, what the impact of COVID was on those mm -hmm. fees and how much will really be available. But it, you know, even if it's yeah. only a 40% match, the Fort Northampton with yeah. a, a full 3% surcharge, that, that ends up being quite a bit of money. Great. And uh, Jack, when is your term up? So when uh, uh, when would Elizabeth be well, taking that role? It, it would be good if she could start in the fall when the new cycle goes through. I mean, I don't, uh -huh. I don't really have a term and just that you don't want to switch horses in the middle of a rant cycle. Right. So would it be uh, realistic for you to, uh, for a couple of meetings, both sit on uh, you as the remaining official representative of Conscar, and then I, I think Elizabeth will pick it up very quickly. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I've I've been to several of the meetings. I'm very familiar with the act itself. Um, uh -huh. okay. uh, coming from the land trust, I've actually proposed projects to the committee for funding, so I have an idea. I, I my weakest link is going to be the housing piece of it, which um, would will be very interesting to me. And, and that will be stepping up a lot, most likely this fall, um, because one of the allowable uses for CPA funds is direct rental assistance. And with uh, eviction moratoriums ending and a lot of people still out of work, we're anticipating a, a lot of those types of applications. Yeah, I would read about that. So. Good. So Sarah, you're the staff person. I'm looking at the committee online now. You're the staff support, yes. which is wonderful. <laughs> and so. Who handles the finances or, you know, tells the, in terms of the grant, the money, how much we have, how many applications, all that? That would be sure. <laughs> you do. Wow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's one of my other hats. I also staff the Historic Commission. So I, I have three hats that I wear concurrently all the time. <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> yeah. Really, it's uh, when you... You think about um, last time I checked, uh, Amherst has 1.75 FTEs for its uh, uh, conservation commission, um, and I, I don't think they get a lot more done than Sarah does with her so one third of a hat or something that of an FTE. I, I am, uh, I am mostly conservation commission. Uh -huh, okay. I, I, although on, it's all on paper. I, Every day is different. Yeah, right. uh, but in, in good news, Tom, our land and projects planning assistant, who does a lot of the outside work and you know, baseline documentation and those types of things, is now full time, which is great. Um, so he's not funded in, entirely for um, land projects, but he'll be available a lot more with his Very good. Good. All right. Um, we got anything else? Minutes. I have a check. Technical minutes, but I have a technical question. I, how come we um, are we going to do Google Meeting or Zoom or? No, my for some reason whenever I try to send an email, Google like, hijacks it and tries you, you to can, you can turn set off up a, a Google feature. Meeting instead of a Zoom. I it keeps getting shut off and then it it adds itself again. So I, I apologize. <laughs> Just as okay. long as we don't have Zoom, we'll be looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> Randy, I thought we were going to learn a new skill today. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have done Google Meets. It doesn't work quite as well. Uh -huh. um, and every, everyone who participates has to have a Google account, which is a detriment uh, also. Okay. Do we have to approve the minutes that 
Oh, yes. That didn't happen uh, before I came on. Yes. So we have. Oh, minutes. sorry. That's all right. <laughs> we had uh, minutes from, let's see, Sarah sent them out and I read them and they looked okay. It was sometime yeah. back in February, was it, or March? March 12th. Okay. Someone want to make a motion to approve? Move and approval second? of the minutes. Made and seconded. Any amendments or discussion? If not, all, all, all in favor? Oh, do you need a roll call, Sarah? I do. Uh, yeah. Jason? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jack? Yes. Alec? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. And Kevin? Yes. All right. Thanks very much. So what do, what do we have? Uh, we're approaching July and we often um, do either zero or one meeting uh, in July and August. What do we have coming at us so far? So I don't believe, it doesn't look like we have anything on the agenda for the ninth. Um, I'll go back and check again, but I don't think anybody filed in the time to be able to do that. Likely just the 23rd. Just the 23rd. Uh, if, we, if we do meet on the ninth, it will be really brief. Okay. All right. Well, um, as long as we have uh, internet connection, um, even if we are away, any of us, uh, mm -hmm. doesn't make that much difference. So um, let us know if things do come up for the ninth, but otherwise right. we'll tend we'll to do. plan next meeting for 23rd of July. Super. Anything else from anybody? <laughs> Everybody okay? Nobody getting sick? Uh, yeah. I have one thing to, to mention. I've heard that there's been some rumbles from the Lead Civic Association about mountain bikes. Um, kind of heard through the Mountain Bike Network that some local residents have been having issues. So I'm just curious if you've heard anything else, Sarah. I haven't heard anything. Um, they've been having a lot of issues with people really irresponsibly using the, the Mill River in Leeds, so that, that's mostly what I've been dealing with them about, but I haven't heard anything about mountain bike. Yeah, I was uh, a, a couple of days ago, walked with my dog up the, uh, across the street from the um, Country Club parking lot, that entrance to the Roberts Meadow mm -hmm. um, trail. And there was a bunch of uh, what sounded to be very drunk teenagers um, the, by that rope swing area that's there. And I saw a few by the on the dam right below that uh, yeah, hotel bridge, the old bridge there. Yeah. On the dam, and I saw cans around when I biked past one time a couple week, a couple weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, that area and the area of the chart pack dam uh, just off the bike path are, are really high use areas, and unfortunately, the conservation commission doesn't own most of that property, so there's really limited city enforcement we can do. Uh -huh. I do have an item. Um, Sarah, you might want to check out the end of Crestview Drive, which is the next street over from the one I live on. There's a lot of demo material at the end, which is pretty close to the wetlands. Like dump stuff? Yeah, it's like uh, okay. bro broken up tar, um, yeah. big piles of gravel. Uh, it's probably been there a while, but I'm not sure. I mean, there's a guy down the end of the street down at the bottom that's doing a lot of work. I don't know whether he had them dump the stuff up at the end of the street mm -hmm. or whether it's the DPW. And for some reason, the DPW goes up to the end of Ellington almost every day in the afternoon, and I'm not sure why, <laughs> with city trucks. Um, oh. I don't know whether they're I don't clean that catch basin out every day or what. I don't know. The one that the... That the I know... They've been having some issues with the, the sewer there, and there's been some beaver activity also, but I don't know why they've been going up quite that much. I'll yeah, the, the, the dam looks like it's being worked on by, by beaver again. Yeah, they're, they're back in that area. Yeah. But yeah, they're up there almost every day. I just didn't know whether there was some project going on that we weren't aware of. Yeah, I mean, they may be working on plans for the, the sewer main uh, because that's sort of when the when your development stopped being developed, the developer sort of just walked away. And that 
uh, that sewer main wasn't dealt with the way it should have been. Yeah. So they, they may be working on some plans for that and dealing with the end. Well, it looks like they've opened and closed the gate a lot that, that protects the ends of the pipe from the beaver dams. But Crestview is, uh, you know, I just took a walk up here the other day and noticed there was a lot of stuff up there. Some of it old, some of it new. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely check it out. Okay. Uh, Sarah, I was up um, the new uh, boathouse and um, community rowing, um, uh, sort of a quantum hub shaped thing up. Uh, and the, uh, there's clearly no activity going on, no boats uh, going out and getting launched. Um, but the, uh, the dock, do you remember a couple of winters ago, the, um, the ice flow coming down the Connecticut River took away the, uh, uh, the floating dock that they had left out there. Um, and so the, the ramp area, um, the paved area still goes all the way down now to a wooden dock that is got no trespassing signs on it, um, but the- uh, So that was, I, I actually, I've heard about this a lot, which I guess is good, uh, good evidence that people are utilizing this area, which is great. Um, but a Connecticut River Conservancy group got word that there was going to be some enormous like teenager keg party down there and they didn't really know what to do. So they went up, uh, they went out there and knowing full well it's public property, just posted private property signs to try and deter that. <laughs> um, I don't know if it worked or not, but they are down for now because they've been misleading people who wanted to uh -huh, responsible way in the daytime. So that's, the, uh, so part, part one of my question is, uh, uh, that doc isn't really off limits because it, it is, so, wait, no, wait, this is part of the community. So, okay. Yeah, the second that, thing that's is, a, it's a public park. Are, are there any plans to rebuild the, uh, um, the, the proper ramp that went down from that more elevated section and, uh, to a floating dock? I don't know. Um, I think Northampton using community rowing was taking the lead on some fundraising for that. Uh -huh. okay. uh, and I, I don't know where they are on that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else? All right. Well, good to see everybody. Uh, it'll be four weeks from today. Um, is that right? Four weeks? I think it is. Uh, 25. No, 23rd will be pretty close to four, uh, four weeks from today. Um, and uh, stay well, and um, we'll see how this all goes. The baseball season is about to start, uh, so uh, you can have. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it'll be like watching games on television and having nobody in the stands, and for baseball and basketball, but yeah. they're all going to get My started friends. in the next few weeks. I was watching some uh, soccer games in Europe, and they pump. I don't know if it's in a stadium or just in the uh, the feed I'm getting, but they pump artificial sound in. <laughs> it was weird. Though, like, after a goal, it was still the same level. So yeah. <laughs> I just can't wait till Formula One racing starts back up. <laughs> All right. Well, good to see everyone. You too. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, stay cool out there Thank in you. the mountains of, of Colorado or wherever you are. <laughs> Utah. Right. It's, uh, it's snow basin. Snow basin. Okay, great. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care. Yep.